Doc, I'm Pixie. I'm Sam. I'm Paris, Sam. And last weekend, well, last week you guys might have noticed we didn't do a show, because last weekend we went to Gen Con! Woo. Yeah, when we were actually, when we would have normally recorded a show, Pyro was in the middle of a cross-country odyssey to get to Illinois, you know, like, like you do. The drive is about 23 hours, and I was initially planning to break it up with hotel stops in the middle, but then for some reason I decided, nope, not gonna do that. And <laughs> this is far more car- cost effective just to sleep to myself it is. and it saved, keep going. It saves a ton of money. But it's also very engaging on that last like four hours of a twenty three hour drive because highways are a kind of you have no option scenario. It's like, yeah, there's no exits, I can't turn around. That I have to I have to either stay awake for the next thirty minutes or I will die. It's like Yep. Just you're engaged. There's a certain amount of thrill in that. Mm-hmm. So yes, we all spent the weekend at Gen Con Indianapolis. That would have been the sound of my elbow ricocheting off our desk. You're a poor desk. It knows right, what it is. So did. technically Gen Con Indy it takes place in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um Last Largest week. gaming convention in the United States. Gen Con uh, Indy, the even though there isn't really any other Gen Con to speak of at this point. But that's the technical name. I'm trying to be appropriate. Yeah. No, I think, Brunk- there, I think there are actually other Gen Cons. I'm a, I'm a journalism major. i got to be accurate. The other thing I think is pretty funny about Gen Con is now it does not really stand for anything. Because initially it stood for Lake Geneva Convention when it was at Lake Geneva. But that's not mm. there anymore, and they just kept the name, so doesn't mean anything. Just Gen. Whatever. Right, so Gen Con Indie is the current only still running Gen Con. Okay, so apparently there were others and they are no more. Yeah, previously there was... Uh, They're learning all kinds of things. West, South, and East. Uh, European Gen Con. Barcelona. UK. Uh, SoCal. And Australia. Indy is currently the only one still running. Yeah. And so that takes place, uh, th- that happened uh, Thursday, August 16th through Sunday the 19th. Uh, we arrived on Friday the 17th. Yep. And the ladies in our group decided, screw it, we're going to cosplay right now. Yeah, I had kind of gone into this under the assumption that the ladies had gone, you know what, first day we'll spend shopping and walking around and getting our bearings. Second day is cosplay madness. Nope, just changed in the car. Yep. I was stripping in the parking lot. Well, the parking deck. Parking structure thing. Right. Parking garage. There we go. That's the word I'm looking Yeah, because we were underground that day. All cosplay so, yeah. all the time. Also, parking in downtown is Indianapolis is ridiculous. Right. There are lots of people who specifically go to Gen Con just to walk around in costume, apparently. So, Pixie, so, tell me what your costume was. Uh, I was, uh, this was a repeat from last year, which I've gotten a little bit of crap for from uh, old from our old chat. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, like, it's a cosplaying no-no to repeat the same outfit two years in a row, which, no. screw you, you're putting in all the effort to make no. this costume? I don't think that's I was, true I at all. I put all that effort into building it, that's no. That's That can't be right. If it works, you wear it twice. If the character's, like, still relevant, like, honestly... The... Actually, no, my character's completely irrelevant, but I'll get into that. It was no, irrelevant totally the more... first time, so hey, <laughs> not like that's <laughs> yes. a development. Yeah, but, um, so I was Jade from Beyond Good and Evil, which came out way back in 2003, which makes it completely irrelevant, but it also meant that I was the only Jade there, which was kind of cool. You get to be unique. Yeah, you, you know those scenes in Doctor Who where they're just, like, around contemporary modern London? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was cosplaying one of those extras. <laughs> Some jackass in a t-shirt, maybe wearing a hat on some days. Uh, I was cosplaying a dude with a top hat at a convention. There you go. When was yeah, the I, Beyond Good and Evil remake out? Was that out last year when we were at Gen Con? Last year. Yeah, that was that was last year because we reviewed it. Oh. It was even kind of relevant last year, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, because <laughs> I, I played it, and then I was like, you know, I could totally make this. <laughs> at some point it will be relevant again whenever Ubisoft gets around to but Beyond Good and Evil But then her character design too. will change, you right. see. Right. 
And so that I I would have to make a new one. But it'd be there even more stressful to color in the legs on the pants on that one because the textures would be high enough resolution that there would actually be a visible pattern instead of it just kind right. of being a mass of pixels that we interpreted yeah. a pattern out of. I, 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 got, I gotta fess up that I stared at those pants. I, I bought these pants, I think I think they were from Victoria's Secret even. <laughs> I stared at these pants with my marker in my hand going, if I mess this up, I am so boned. <laughs> And, uh... Pulled it out. After, like, after panicking for about 20 minutes, I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Nobody's played this game for, like, a decade, and... Right. Even if even if they had played it recently, it's... it's The game is, one, really dark, and, like, like not, like, aesthetically or thematically or whatever, just, like, it is dark, and you can't really see anything all that well. Like, I couldn't even tell w- what shoes she was wearing. But those picks... They look like... Just brown clogs. The textures don't they? on and I was her like, pants that doesn't make any were sense. not high enough resolution for there to actually be a texture that you could look at. I mean, you would assume that there's a texture there from the general pattern of the pixels when you're far away, but if you zoom in, it's just pixels. And so I just kind of like gra- grabbed a bunch of screenshots and then eyeballed it. And at the end of the day, they turned out pretty great. Why, thank you. But it turns out that. Cosplaying all the time at conventions saves a lot of money, because you're too busy getting your picture taken to be out on the show floor. But... Right. So, it has two big advantages. Or to eat. God, I thought I was gonna die. (laughs) Oh, yes. The not eating part is not so great, especially when you don't have any storage capacity, because you have to have your costume be accurate. And Jade does not have much storage capacity in the game. Oh, no, she has infinite storage capacity by virtue of the inventory system, that thing that I've it's had that modified canteen. It's just not modeled canteen. in the world. Yeah, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's just, I'm gonna digitize everything and then I can carry infinity pearls. <laughs> okay, so the solution is obvious. For next year, we just get you a digitizer, like the capsule remember, from Dragon Ball Z. I gotta remember what that, what the name of that thing is called now, because it's gonna bother me. You also need some weird Jamaican-French AI talking to you. Mmm, Jamaican-French. Whatever he was. Yeah, uh, no, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, the, the Jamaican accent was the the rhinos. Oh. So what was her AI? Secundo, I, I have no idea. Fair he, enough. He would use French words and he would use Spanish words, and it would just be a big mishmash. I don't even think he was supposed to be anything. Nerd talk discussing games that ceased to be relevant ten years ago. He's just a robot that spoke all languages. And Who wants to talk about to Star Fox? Let's talk about Star Fox. I don't know much about Star Fox. I could talk about Star, so- Star Fox 64 if you wanted. <laughs> I, could, I could tell you to do a barrel roll. It was made with the first 3D FX exactly. graphics. Synthetic Atomic Compressor, SAC. Oh yeah, Star Fox was polygons on the SNES. That's I remembered crazy. the name, yay. Are we approaching 20 years of irrelevance territory? Hey guys, remember Pong? Pong? So cosplaying all day does two good things, because it saves you a lot of money on the exhibit floor, and it lets you meet a lot of people and see a lot of other costumes. And Uh, have a lot of people, oddly enough, center their cameras to take pictures of your chest. (laughs) You know, it's about 50-50. Yeah. (laughs) I was kind of taking inventory by quizzing people to see if they knew who my character was, to see and, who was taking pictures of my and, costume, and, so what, and who was taking pictures of my body. And so what was the best missed it like moment? It's got to have been the two guys who kept using the wrong name. And yeah, those guys thought you were Yuffie? Yes. Um, though they were rather insistent on calling me that. Like, we corrected them, and they still kept doing it. I think they were just doing it to... Yeah, they, they were trolling you at that <laughs> point. The other phenomenon I observed that I liked is that And then that I people... went and I found a Yuffie, and I got my picture taken with her. <laughs> and even she thought that was nuts. Yeah, there, there wasn't much resemblance there. The midriff, the, the green, green the, over, the over jacket, the bandana, and the lipstick. But that's well, a little no, insulting when lips. you consider the details, the extent we go to to make oh, sure all the, the short details hair. are right. When we're making a costume. uh, My hair I might give you, but she does not have green lipstick, and more importantly, she does not wear pants. Right, Yuffie wears shorts. Yeah. Black shorts, specifically, if I remember correctly. So, that was a no. So I got a lot of that, 
Let's see. Who else was I confused for? Ron Perlman? Tell me someone confused <laughs> you for Ron Perlman. No, but I give you points for trying. <laughs> Let's see. Pyro, do you, do you remember any good ones? I remember being confused for a lot of other characters. I just can't. I, I remember the character. I'm having trouble coming up with her name right now. Uh, can you give me something to go on and I can help you guess? Uh, it was from Metal Gear Solid. Meryl. Meryl. Yes, it was I did Meryl. have, yeah. Your hair isn't orange, though. I know. It's dumb. Well, I was also standing next to Snake. Yeah. The other but phenomenon that was also that I Naked liked, Snake, wasn't it? people maybe not understanding your costume. Yes, it was a Naked Snake and or Big Boss. Yes. But people, most everybody thought it but was But then I got Snake a Meryl because... from Trigun who ran up to me and was like, I want to take a picture with another Meryl, and we were like, just let her have it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to spoil her fun. <laughs> what, the Wookiee win? Yeah, basically. I just called, did you just call that poor young woman a Wookiee? Possibly, I don't know what she looked like. Apparently <laughs> Meryl from Trigun. <laughs> Secretly, it was Rusty Balls as Tall Wookiee as Meryl. It was like a meta <laughs> cosplay. <laughs> You're getting anyway, too I'm smart sorry. for Congoers at that point. <laughs> Pyro, uh, you were saying. The people would come near you and say, hey, I recognize which game you're from, but they never actually spit out the name of the game or character. They'd be like, yeah, I totally recognize that obscure game. I'm not going to say its name or the name of your character, but I'm going to act like I know it. I did have a lot of people who went, yes, this was Beyond Good and Evil, or, you know, had their memory jog to, to but they could not remember Jade's name. See, and I'm I, just like, it's that color that I'm wearing. I actually think it would, because of that, it would be easier to remember the character's name than the name of the franchise. Yeah. Not even a franchise, yeah, it's a single it's game. Jade, which is a color, which is green, which is basically all I was wearing. Right. Eh. So cosplaying successful this year, huh? It was. I got a lot more. I, I, I did get, you know, the, the ones that do recognize it are are really enthusiastic about it. They're like, oh my gosh, that game was my childhood or whatever. It's, 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 it's always really fun to actually be recognized when you do something that obscure right. and weird. Um, so are we thinking any next uh, year cosplay items? I know for certain that I'm going to build an Ezio. Okay. Dixie? Um, I had a few ideas running around. Uh, nothing that I am willing to commit to yet. Yep. Uh, we were, uh, Pyro, you and I were thinking about trying to put a Catwoman together. Uh, yeah, we've, we've looked at some pictures of that and, you Arkham know, shopped around City idly. Game. So, we've shopped around for bits, but... Did you see that apparently in the Wii version of Arkham City, Catwoman decided to zip up? I did not. Yeah. I did not see that, and I did not even know there was a Wii version of Arkham the, City. The armored, the armored edition of Arkham City, which is coming out for the Wii, Catwoman has zipped up. That's... I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah. I've... Yeah. I that's... have to process my feelings and get back to you on Still, this. Still, this may be the only time that you will hear your Wii drop the word bitch 18 times in a minute. Oh god, well, now I know that I don't like it, because, okay, if you're gonna censor, if you're gonna I, I soften no, up some things... I have no idea if it's still gonna do that, that was a joke. Okay, well... <laughs> the, the, well, the, I don't imagine that they would go through and censor all those lines of dialogue, but... Well, I feel like it can hardly be the same game, just because yeah. of the hardware limitations of the Wii and the input method. So, maybe it is Arkham City in name only. Possible. Yeah, I mean, because that game's huge in scope. Yep. It takes some pretty serious hardware to realistically run a port of that game, and I don't think a Wii could do it. You know, you know what? I, and I was playing it very recently while you know thinking about this idea. It really reminds me of, and this is going to sound extraordinarily dumb, but there is a Spider-Man Two movie tie-in game on the. Xbox I played forever that Spider-Man game, and I liked and that Spider-Man game the, a lot. Like, and I see the, the similarities. The like, city swinging parts that was like my favorite thing to do. Like, just forget all the civilians who need help. Just forget the actual plot. Just, just I'm just gonna like be cruising around New York swinging. <laughs> I, I was playing Arkham City literally half an hour ago, and the moment for me 
I, I had that moment today where I was like, oh my god, this is the Spider-Man 2 movie game, was you're, I was gliding, and I hit the grappling hook, and the grappling hook just went up off the top of the screen. I had no idea what it was grappling to, but then I just went, and I was like, yeah. Because that's what happens in the Spider-Man 2 game. It has to game. hit something. Yeah, it has to hit something. I yeah. remember that was a big deal from going from 1 to 2. And but and also, in, in Arkham City, it hits things, too. It was just yeah. off the screen at that point. Uh, also, what does that is, you, if you, like, do enough of, like, the... The VR, the VR training, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the augmented reality training sequences, that, that gets you, like, a grappling hook boost. And so then you can just keep swinging off of the same jump. Yep. And not have to touch down and land. So you could move through even faster, and I was just like, yes! Yeah, I believe there's actually a challenge for traversing the entire city without landing. Mm. Though it does totally seem like Arkham City is just more Arkham Asylum, except with an open world. But the open world Which does Which I'm lot pretty happy yeah, with. That's I, not I like a bad a thing in any way. That's, and, that, 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 I don't see what your problem is here, good sir. Um, I have no problem. I, th I like, thought that was great. Let's take delicious ice cream, and now we're going to add fudge and sprinkles. And also Catwoman, and, and Arkham Catwoman. City Catwoman is pretty cool. Yep. So, while Pixie was cosplaying, I spent my entire convention shopping and doing demos of games, because it's pretty great. This is why I go to Gen Con. I can dress silly at home. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I go to the cons to be seen and to meet people and go do stuff. I make so many friends! Yep, whereas I go for the games. And first up on our list of new games, we have the first expansion to Super Dungeon Explorer, the Caverns of Roxor. So, this is... We mentioned so this game forever ago. Do you suppose we should, like, touch over it real quick on so what it is? Basically, the concept of Super Dungeon Explorer is it it, it is a tabletop uh, miniature game that you buy the whole thing in one go. It's, it's a board game set that is designed to mimic a classic... Dungeon crawler. Yeah, a classic, like, Super Nintendo dungeon crawler. Like, all of the uh, game representations are, like, buttons, like an arcade cabinet. Um, the heroes are very cliched as to what you would expect to see. Um, the villains, to follow that, that classic D&D. But everything has this, like, chibi anime aesthetic to it mm -hmm. that, that just works. And means everything, even all the horrible monsters, are so adorable. So who's that cute little slime monster who's on fire? It's you. It's so you. where the first game focused on um, kobolds and dragon, uh, dragon spawn as the main villains. What they're doing now is they're expanding the game by not only adding more heroes for the. Somebody didn't turn off their phone. No, I just silenced it. Uh, <laughs> while they added more heroes, they also added more options for the person playing the dark console. Hee mm hee -hmm. pun. Um, so in addition to the dragons we and know, kobolds... we at Nerd Talk absolutely love puns. We now also have rock turtles and fire-based enemies. Um, namely, Roxor's minions, who... Take the form of various fire creatures, uh, gels. There's an ember hound. Because you didn't try to set us on fire enough, Jeff. Well, now we've got more of it. We've got uh, a rock troll, rocks or him or herself. I'm not sure what the gender of the giant fireball is. Now he'll be able to sublimate his desire to set you on fire into the game, rather than having to set you on fire in real life. Right. Well, we also have turtle enemies who are themed off of like the Super Mario Brothers Koopas. Uh, they're called the Rock Tops. And in addition, we have three new heroes that the uh, hero side can get to play as. You have the Deep Root Scout, who is totally a knockoff, but not a knockoff of Link. Mm -hmm. The um, Star Guild Sapper, who is potentially like classic Mario Brothers. He's a dwarf with a giant hammer. And then you also have Princess Ruby who is now possibly the ultimate buffer in the game. And looks suspiciously like... Peach. Yep. So yeah, the game... The the full set also comes with turtle shell markers, because I guess when you're attacking the turtles, they can retreat into their shells. 
Um, you also have new treasure cards so and new monster and hero cards. It's not just, here's the same game, but with, like, right. a new coat of paint. No, it's literally an expansion that you are designed to put into the existing game. Um, and I also, dodging lava and kobolds was enough. <laughs> right. Also previewed was the next coming set, which they said would probably be, le- be released six months from now, yeah, which same. has a ghouls and goblins theme, which I was really excited about. Because you now have a vampire lord who looks like one of the heroes. He, he's a small-based model, but will shift into this giant, like, va- uh, bat monster. Yeah, I remember you being really excited about that when we stopped by the... Uh... I, I kind of felt bad about it, because, like, while I was talking to the guy who made the game about, like, Caverns of Roxor, I'm, I'm looking at the Ghouls and Goblins one, I'm like, oh my god, when does this one come out? Screw what you just put all the effort into putting out. I want the next one. I don't care about your thing, man. Get out. Give me the next Give me the thing. thing. Well, it's it's not even that he doesn't care about that thing, because he's still you're still wanting to purchase a product that they made and worked hard on. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't know, but I was more excited about the next one than I am about this one. Like, sure, Mario and Zelda theme is fine. That's great. Nope, give me the horror theme one. I just imagined that it was this that totally guy personally. That was I want, I want a little chibi vampire hunter. That was responsible for the current expansion, and then everybody else was responsible for the other expansion. I'm, I'm looking at the waveforms for our audio levels, and I can see the parts where you're getting more excited. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really funny. No, I now want to, like, commission them to make little chibi versions of the, uh, the League of Legends characters for this game. That would be funny. It'd be adorable. I want a little bit. There, va- there's no way that Riot would ever do nope. that, but I, it would be funny. I want a little vein. To just leap around the board and shoot things. So I was so, yeah. thinking, since I'm when I'm going to be building my Ezio cosplay, there are a lot of things you can do with Ezio because the games cover pretty much his entire life, from literally him being born and being an infant to him being an elder and like dying of old age. So you could you could have very young Ezio or very old Ezio. Could be Cheat old man Ezio, Ezio and like, so, shake your fist and tell people to get could, off your Could I just follow you around as a jackass in a gray hoodie and claim I'm Desmond? <laughs> yes. Yes, you could. But that would... <laughs> that's such an easy costume. I don't know that I even saw Eddie Desmond's. It's I don't think that you would have noticed them if you had. Well, people wouldn't have been wearing hoodies in the con normally because it was warm enough. But There's so many hot bodies, which is well. I, by by that I mean like people giving off heat through metabolizing stuff and also breathing. But <laughs> and you right. know, just a very small fraction of them were sexy and attractive. Well, duh, I was there. <laughs> well, Me <yes>. too. <laughs> it was one in the entire convention. It was just pixie. <laughs> so while we were there, I also I I had heard about a promotion that uh, Cool Mini or Not was doing to promote their new tabletop war game Dark Age where if you went to their booth and did a demo and then spent $20, they would hand you the $20 hardcover rule book to the game. Or, in my case, since I was kind of wavering on the idea of do I want to start a new game or not, they really managed to sucker me in. And the designer of the game was like, well, your group of friends already got, like, three copies of the Core Rulebook. Tell you what, you buy some stuff, I'll just give you the $40 Force List book, which is kind of like the book that contains all of the models in the game, for free. Gave you a deal. So That's one of I the nice things about conventions, is if you can get some deals and bit, yeah. know the people. Right, I, I really like... on the internet. I, I mean, I got a demo from one of the game's lead designers, which is awesome. So, yeah. That was really cool, though. That, that is one cool thing about um, buying from the dealer rooms, because I kind of feel like the dealer rooms are generally, one, really pricey, and two, like, it's all stuff you could be buying online, but... But then you get deals, and you get to meet the people who make the games, and you get stuff that isn't out yet. Mm-hmm. Like, you that was specifically one... Before you buy. That was one of the That's requirements I've set for myself. I was not. I was not. I, I just wasn't in the market to go buy game stuff this year, honestly. Right. I, I had set myself up for. Okay. You had a significantly I'm, more generous budget than me. I'm not going to buy anything that either I'm not directly talking to the people who make the games, 
or uh, that isn't out yet. Mm -hmm. So with Dark Age, yes, I could get the models for you it online. You still spent a hefty amount. I did. I really did. But I got everything I wanted, so it works. Um, and actually, the things that I couldn't get, uh, there were a couple things at the weird miniatures booth, the Malifaux people, that they just didn't get in stock before Gen Con because they rushed the entire shipment of stuff from their new book, which came out at the con. He wanted from the con, and all he wanted was everything. No, I actually didn't buy anything from the people who technically run the con. I, I didn't buy a single Wizards of the Coast product. Oh, I can't say that now, actually. We bought magic cards. So, we uh, yes, tried to were... steer the topic back to cosplay, and you keep derailing us, so I'm going to yank it forcibly back from you. Yeah, I, I want to go down a, nap, a list then. of cool other people who were doing costumes. Uh, the, the... I don't want to just talk about myself here, you know, try to report on other stuff that we saw for the folks at home. Alright, I'll be back later. <laughs> <laughs> What a chump. You want to go make a sandwich or something? No, I'm He's, he's going to turn back up as a tall Wookiee, and his balls are going to be rusty. Balls. One of the cosplayers goes by the name Rusty Balls. And it, that it's name a Wookiee so on vivid. stilts. It just it sticks in my mind. But he had the he had the bowcaster, though, which was, you know, pretty cool. That, there I was don't a tiny baby the Batman, which was adorable. Wookie. Oh, the, the baby Batman in the Batmobile was amazing, because usually babies are terrible. He pushed around like a pseudo-stroller Batmobile thing, and it was awesome. And, like, but, I actually saw him, he was in the cosplay contest, which I went and attended, like, to watch. And, and if you, viewer, are watching the YouTube version of this podcast, you will have seen him, because I took video of the whole parade, and he was in it both at the beginning and the end. Is actually funny. the The costume parade was kind of not super well organized when we were going to attend it. It was a bit difficult to find out where it started. Yeah, at the end, it just kind of fizzled. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but people can join into it while it is going through the convention center. So yeah, what I did but... <laughs> is I, I was standing right by the beginning of the parade and I filmed the whole thing. And then, since the costume parade is winding around the inside of the convention center, and everybody's lined up, so you'd have to run in front of them and block their shots and whatever if you're gonna try and get through, I ran around the outside of the convention, and all the way around the building and back in the other side, and then filmed the whole parade again on the other side, and it was like three to four times longer where it ended than where it began, because lots of people joined up in the middle. But I believe the baby was in it both times, so you'll get to see it twice. But, yeah, um, and so they, the, they do the parade, and then it go, funnels, like, basically right into the cosplay contest, where they have that. And he was in that, and when they were, you know, on the stage and doing his costume, like, it, he had, like, retractable little bat wings, and it was adorable. That's amazing. I never got to see the retractable bat wings. Woo. They, like, yeah, they pushed out, and it was really cool. The unfortunate part is to be Batman, those parents have to die. No. Oh. Damn it! Uh, I think That's true. I think I remember seeing uh, Lulu cosplayer from League of Legends pushing around the cart at one point. So, and there were a lot of League of Legends cosplays. There was a Kale that I saw that was pretty good. Uh, I, I, yeah, we got so many pictures. You have them all, Pyro. <laughs> and, yes. Um, there was a Kale. There was a Singed. There was Lulu. There was uh, Zyra. That's a champ that just came out. So. Are you sure it wasn't actually a poison ivy? It was Zyra. Okay. She was in the... H had the ear things? Was, yes, and she was in the League of Legends photo shoot. Like, they, they gathered up all of the lead champ cosplayers in one spot. There was a Caitlyn that was pretty impressive. Let's see, there was a Sona. Uh, gosh, I don't think I'm going to be able to remember them all. I want to see the person who cosplays Hecarim. Oh, there was a really awesome gangplank who was carrying around and biting off of an orange. <laughs> Removing his scurvy all day long. Vitamin C. Mm. There were, as always, lots of Homestuck trolls, and I was excited that they had a true gathering of them, and I believe they even tried to narrow it down such that they got photo shoots with one of each canonical troll. And had like a real family portrait. I was excited about that. Yeah, I have to try and find that on the internet. There Let's were see. lots of links, as always. A, a lot of... number of Deadpools. I only saw two. 
And one of them was really fantastic. Like, he had that character down. He had an attitude. <laughs> you, you would see him, like, shouting at and insulting people at the con, and you would see, like, them their faces get mad, and then when they looked, they were all like, Oh, it's Deadpool. Oh, you. <laughs> there was a Joker with two thugs, and the thugs were totally... Like Joker thugs, dumb and submissive, and the Joker was, like, a jerk and crazy, and it was pretty and awesome. And totally hitting on me. <laughs> At one point, I believe he had a joy buzzer in his hand that may or may not have been functioning, and tried to get you to shake a, his hand. I Pixie was, was not having about to find out. Because Pixie was like, you, wait, sir, can that... take a hike. <laughs> you don't touch the Joker. <laughs> Oh, no, it's the lady doesn't shake. Come on now. <laughs> and then he he eventually kissed your hand instead of shocking you, so it worked out for the best. It totally worked out in my favor. But, um... Yeah, a Joker that went that far to get into character probably would have shocked you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. That that seems quite likely. So at, at I the was same like, time, you know, I I'm think... not... Also... You know, I think it would have been slightly in character for me to be suspicious. Just saying. <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> this lack. Jade does not believe anything she is told up front. There were lots of assassins in various degrees of dedication to the costume. I there saw were... some very lazy assassins. <laughs> there were some assassins who were like, I took a white bed sheet and put it on my <laughs> head, and now I'm an assassin. <laughs> And then, you, you know what we used to call that ten years ago was being a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much what some of them were. And then there were assassins that were extremely <laughs> dedicated, that had every weapon, every piece of embroidery, and there were assassins from every generation. So there were like Ezio's, Altair's, uh, Connor's from Upcoming 3. And I was very excited that there was even an Aveline from Assassin's Creed Liberation. That's the upcoming Vita game. Is the first lady assassin to lead a game. And uh, so there were both ladies cosplaying the Renaissance era assassins. Like, I, I didn't talk to that one, but I think she was just a Renaissance era assassin. Like, you had in your posse in Revelations. But there was one I did talk to, and she was explicitly Aveline. And I was excited because I like cosplays where people are not necessarily going to get it unless they know what you're doing. And she was like, yeah, I, not as many people will get this costume, but I don't care. It was a good costume. Yeah. It's, 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 it's fun doing that. And, the... and one thing that I really loved seeing on the other cosplays is like the, the, the attention to detail. Like It's just like little things that you look at and go, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yes. Like, wow, you did a lot of embroidery for that. And that's all the right embroidery. I know because I pulled out my phone and looked up reference. And yeah, that's the right embroidery. Also, you are a super nerd for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. It happens. If you're not a super nerd, what are you doing at Gen Con? That's, I suppose you have a point, good sir. But, uh... <laughs> There was a parking garage yeah, across from the convention center. Yeah, next time I think I need center. to build in some better, like, storage capacity. Yeah, that seemed to work out very well for, um, Christie's Terra. She yeah, had a she little had a pouch little, on like, her belt. Satchel and... She bought that last year at Gen Con and then just kind of incorporated it into her costume, so there's just a leather pouch that she had along with all those scarves. It works. It and totally we... works with the outfit, but... Looks I was just like, I gotta figure out some way to do something like that because I was slightly dependent on Pyro to carry things like my phone or my little boxes of raisins or whatever else I was trying to smuggle for food. Well, that was something I was more than pleased to do. It's a very low-stress way to attend a con because you just sort of hang back you and just kind of... watch the pictures get taken and watch the other costumes roll by. It's like, just yeah, manage me. check out all these people. I, I like it that way. I feel like, you know, I need handlers or something when I've got, like, I'm only wearing, like, half a shirt, basically, and so it's like, well, I can't put anything in the shirt. You don't have a utility belt like some of the other people we met. Yeah, that naked snake was all, like, all those pockets were fully functional, and I was like, like, I'm so jealous! It turns out that my costume has, like, 40 pouches on it, so that's convenient. <laughs> 
<laughs> just whips one out and is all like, here, you want a protein bar? And I'm like, mind is blown. Protein bar is even the greatest thing to have on that costume, because if you were on a deep cover insertion mission in a jungle, what would you have in those pouches? You'd have protein bars. It's just like the meta totally blows your mind. There so, was also there was also a super awesome um, Commander Shepard, well, two of them. Uh, there was a Fem Shep one that was like in like the evening gown from the Kasumi Stolen Memory DLC from Mass Effect Two, and that was really awesome. So props to Courtney for that one. Ooh, and, I can do uh, I can do a news and a cosplay story at the same time. There was a scout that was involved in a fairly substantial skirmish centering around Pixie where everybody was killing each other. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Go ahead. <laughs> Both of you today are just so... De you, you're just determined to derail me. I should kick you both. Anyway. All right, I'm, we don't have IRC. I'm more I can't than a kick anybody miles away. Anymore. I'd like to see you try. Oh, no, I'm referring uh, to our old IRC boxes. How'd you do that? Boxes. Our old IRC chat box that we don't have anymore. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> yes. There was, okay, there was also a male Shep in, like, you know, the N7 armor. So it was Mike, if I remember his name right. And Grace was also with him, and she did a amazing Dr. Liar to Sony. Like, just, like, the weird head tentacle things, and like she had the jacket down, it was it was awesome. So those those were really really good. I got to see those like really up close, and like I was just like, man, I feel kind of cheap now. <laughs> Always inspires you to do better next year. We did. It, there was there was a lot of there's a lot of one of the other cool things about watching other people in their costumes is like the little. Moments that you wouldn't see in a game, like with that character say, like Link fidgeting with a shield or something while standing on an escalator. Yes, or, like, just how adjusting his boots. Interact. Is like, well, I have to. I am. I'm Link, and I have to tie my shoes. <laughs> you never see that. Yeah. So, and then like little crossovers and stuff. We had this huge mess of a group photo that was like. Captain America, and Jack Sparrow, and Tony Stark, and the Scout from Team Fortress 2, and... That one sure had two that, variations, yeah. one of which was kind of peaceful, and everybody was just posing for a photo, and then it also devolved into a situation where everybody was killing everybody else. It was pretty awesome. The Scout was <laughs> doing some lines and kind of acting like the Team Fortress 2 Scout is supposed to be, and I thought that was really cool, and it made me want to play more Team Fortress 2. And that would actually kind of work out great right now, because Team Fortress 2 just got patched with robot competitors, so it's uh, there's an all-humans versus all-robots mode now. So yeah. yay, co-op! Takes Download the form of a that. horde mode. I'll, I'll take my co-op where I can get it. Hey, co-op is great. It's one of those there things was I a... loved about Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 is multiplayer. Seems pretty nice. It is really nice, and I love it. There was a giant Dalek, and when I say giant, I mean giant. This thing like was not worn huge. so much as piloted. The <laughs> convention staff had to clear a route for it. It was like, you know, 15 feet wide, and was exterminating. Exterminate. Rolling through. Pretty good. I was also kind of disappointed because, like, I deliberately didn't have uh, Jade's Daijo staff, you know, her weapon. Which is yeah, the a big stick, really. Convention uh, because... staff has conflicting or unclear rules about what weapons you are and are not allowed to have. And, like, I don't know if it's a size issue because I've seen, like, clouds carrying around, you know, those giant freaking Final Fantasy swords. Or, you know, and there's other people wandering around with staves and they've even got pointy ends on them and... So I'm, I'm just, I was just a horribly confused mess, and so I was like, you know what, I don't want to be asked to leave or whatever, so I'm just got, not going to do that. And then I was like, darn, missed out. Yep. Because I clearly probably could have gotten away with it. You clearly could have. And we do have evidence of what happens when convention staff is not satisfied with something. 
they just kind of come up to you and politely are like, can you put that away, please? Cause Except how do you put away a giant stick? Uh, I guess you could take it to your yeah, car. Yeah, because that was, that was a small knife, and he was just asked to sheath it. Uh-huh. Which is a lot more doable than, sure, where up my ass do you want me to put this giant staff just that is as tall as I am? Clearly what we've got to do is get you a teleco- telescoping daijo staff. Just be like, it, it folds down to like the size of a shot glass and you just whip it out it's six feet tall. I awesome. imagine that that would probably be even worse. <laughs> Maybe. Because then you have like the risk of actually hitting somebody while you're doing that. Uh, did you see any other cool costumes you wanted to mention? Off the top of my head, oh, there was. Cordy did another really awesome, like, Femme Hawk from Dragon Age 2. It was really cool. And I oh, yeah, that was a good one. I wasn't so much into the game. Yeah. But her costume was really cool, and I didn't even notice until we got to the cosplay contest that, like, the top of that staff actually glowed. Pretty sophisticated. So really cool. Her mom was, like a, like, a cosplay organizer. She did lots of. She had, like, a cosplay for all shirt, and she seemed to be organizing a number of other people. I, I, I feel like this was not her first time at the rodeo, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, clearly she was serious about cosplay, and it showed in the quality of her costume. And I was just like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, let's see. There were a lot of pony cosplays this year. I thought that was kind of... Yeah, I think it's funny, kind of the general idea of Gen Con, which is that Nominally, it is a gaming convention, and I guess if you go way back into its history, it was like an uber nerdy war gaming, like tabletop strategy game convention, and which is sort of... still present. It's there is an entire room for that. Yes, and then it kind of diversified out into all tabletop gaming, and then now there's kind no, of like it's, a it's small. It's just kind of anything that's tangentially nerdy electronics game segment, and then yeah, there's just Doctor Who and ponies, because why not? We'll just throw those in there too. Uh, we ran into Sparkly Kiss from Giant Bomb. Hey, it was cool. Hi, Courtney. She was cool. I think next year she wants to grab, like, some novelty pig snout or something and give me piggyback rides as Jade. That would be pretty cool. So that way I can finally have a page to go with it. I remember yeah. last year I remember last year being asked where Paige was and I would just answer the food court, but <laughs> stuffing his mouth with Chili con carne. Chili con carne. What's his battle cry? Chili con carne. So yeah, I, th- I think my cosplay was, you know, a much bigger success this year, but that could have been the company I was keeping. <laughs> All in all, it was a great time. Indeed. And we'll try and get some of those pictures and stuff up, too. Which are currently in your possession, Pyro. (laughs) Yep. They will go up in the YouTube version of this, as well as be linked from the main site. So, all is well. Yeah. So, my mind is blown by the fact that Windows 8, Solitaire, and Minesweeper are going to have achievements. And you not do even love like your tiny in-app achievements. They are going to have Xbox Live achievements with gamer score. You could get gamer score for playing Solitaire. What are the That's achievements crazy. for Solitaire? I wonder. I don't know. I think I think they're pretty simple. Like win a game, and I, I don't think there's a lot of points associated with each of them. I think they're like forty gamer points each for Solitaire, Mahjong, and Minesweeper. So, it's, it's not a ton of points, but they're there, and it's crazy. Let's see. Um, you... Okay, so you mentioned the Man vs. Machine TF2. Oh, okay. Did you ever read Nintendo Power, either of you? I, I did. did not. I had a subscription as a kid. Yeah, I, I read it in I elementary school. I ever read it as a kid was Game Pro. <laughs> no, I... Mm. <laughs> Game Pro, you're... You're a cool kid. You were a cooler kid than I was. I, I specifically yeah, remember Pro. having a, a Nintendo Power subscription. Like, I used to even do the, uh, they'd send out a yearly catalog of exclusive merchandise, and I remember getting really excited about that, because that was the only time to buy official Nintendo merchandise. 
I, I remember just vague images of reading Nintendo Power during recess on the steps of my elementary school, and just one quote from some game review. I don't even know what game review it is, but they described a game as being like Spy vs. Spy, except without the spy, or the spy. I was like, that's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> that quote was really funny to me as an elementary schooler. Some of the ways in which it's nothing like that at all, it's exactly like that. Yep. But Nintendo Power is no more. They're shutting it down. I think not December is their last issue. Yep. If I remember reading that on Twitter right. So after having been passed off to a third-party company to uh, be under production, it hasn't made money that, that way either, and so they're just shutting it down. No word yet as to I what they're going to do for people who have extended subscriptions. I figure they'll probably just refund them. Seems likely. But if they don't have money, which is the reason yeah, they're no. down to begin more, with... More they're often than not, the company will give them a subscription to another magazine. Oh, that makes sense. So, I don't know, we'll see where that goes. Yep. Do we have anything else, guys? It... I was kind of excited about the PC version of Dark Souls, which is going to come out tomorrow, but it looks like there are going to be a number of problems with the port, uh, among which are that its internal renderer is locked at the res very low resolution of 1024 by 720 which is the Xbox native resolution. But on PC, you can turn the resolution above that, and what it will do is render the game at 1024 by 720 and just scale it to the resolution you want. No. To scale the image. And that is so sad. And then, also, its frame rate will be capped at 30 frames a second, regardless of your PC's performance. Boo! This is it's not like, how you do a PC release. That's a really bad PC port. Uh, Dark Souls looks like a pretty interesting game. I've, lo I've watched a lot of video of it on the internet, and I might have played it on PC if it was going to be any good. But right. The the original was go. a super cool game, and if this is just, yeah, we took that and made it better, then that, that totally would have been a fine thing. And consider this a I haven't, public I haven't had to pay attention to things like hardware. Probably avoid the PC version. The, and so this is, this is all a, a whole new world here. Uh, Does do, do, does that have to happen often, uh, you two, since you're more avid PC gamers than me at this point? Uh, well, with, there are lots with, of... With having, like, technical issues... I would say it happens more in the action game genre than the, like, first-person shooter genre. Like, porting a first-person shooter to the PC doesn't seem to have much issues. That's where the first-person shooter started, and so it's not much of a big deal to jump back and forth. And Except for Infinity Ward Call of Duty games, where they seem to kind of explicitly be a dick about it, because none of the Infinity Ward Call of Duty games They collectively decide to explicitly be one dick about it? A single dick. <laughs> yes, correct. A giant multi-headed dick. Of the collective volume of every individual member of the development staff, so it's a huge dick. But yeah, Lots of head. Um, the PC version of the Infinity Ward Call of Duty games do not have controller support or any aim assist. So it's just like, oh, you want to play this like a PC game, huh? Well, then you're playing it with a mouse and you're doing all your aiming yourself. So enjoy. Yep. Uh, that, that doesn't seem to be a failure to develop it, right? It just seems like that studio is particularly precocious, which is why they don't exist anymore. Instead, they're respawn or whatever. But Activision kicked them out, and or they left Activision. But yeah, there's lots of PC ports that have issues. I don't know about the resolution and frame rate lock being all that common. But Darksiders is a game that I saw Jeff playing when I was up in Illinois. And I, I want to play myself, and I own on Steam. But I haven't really been able to because of it does not have any configuration settings for PC. Because I know. And right. Well, I'm distinctly thinking that I would like to review Darksiders 2 for next week. The issue yeah, is since Darksiders 2 has come out, everybody has been talking about both the original and that game, and all anybody is saying is that they're amazing and worth playing. Right. 
I think I'm even going to overcome its control issues on PC to figure out how to play it. Because I remember I've, I've personally had like a couple games and I haven't been playing on a PC for very long. Uh, I've had a couple issues um, with I, I bought Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition on Steam because it was on sale on the cheaps. And that will, like, not manage to run for more than, like, 30 minutes without crashing. Yeah, Fallout 3 has serious problems. I don't know that those problems are really inherited from it being a console port, like lots of PC game problems are. I think that's just, uh, Bethesda is crazy, and Bethesda games have problems. Um, there was, there's also, I remember we had a lot of things that we ran into while playing Saints Row the Third, like, oh... This really ought to have this feature. Well, that's not in here because it's a console port. Um, namely, I was like, well, why can't I put my own songs on the radio stations? Or yep. Uh, why or why it's only loading like a very small area? Yep. Yeah. Or also, there's deficiencies of that. Or I can nature. only remember two cars at a time, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. Deficiencies of that nature are pandemic in PC gaming. Like everything has design. Uh, components that are inherited from the fact that it was designed to also go on consoles. And that's one of the reasons I'm pretty excited about the next generation of consoles, even though I'm not going to buy one, is I'm sure that PC games will be better for it. These are all but things yeah. I did not notice before. But I, there th are th lots there's of a lot of ease failures. and convenience into playing on consoles because then it's like, oh, well, I don't have to worry about whether or not this was designed to work for this. Because it totally Unless was. you're playing PlayStation 3 games, because there's a lot of crappy PlayStation 3 ports. So many crappy ports. But yes, the Dark Souls issues appear to be particularly significant. Stay away. So, Sen, you got any more mini stuff or any other Gen Con things you want to go over? Not particularly. I think we've covered most of it. Did you buy any other cool stuff? Uh, Ooh. tons of Malifaux stuff. I... Hooray for weird miniatures. Yeah, hooray. They were awesome. Definitely the winners of that show. Um, you had a pretty good haul. Privateer didn't bring a lot this year. Like It's unfortunate, but most of their releases are out. Uh, Colossals was a really small book. So like I'm, I'm fairly confident I can say that apart from two of the Colossals, you can get m all of them now. Uh, they're only missing the... The Galleon, which is the Mercenary Colossal, and the uh, Judicator, which is the Protectorate Colossal, which was He's actually the Galleon, being... and I'm thinking like Harry Potter currency. No, the <laughs> Galleon is basically a pirate warship made into a warjack. Like, I can understand that on a fundamental level. That was just the subconscious thing. That that, that was like my snap reaction for an association. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, apart from... The new Colossals, and, and they did have two of the Gargantuans there. You you could have bought a Mountain King and the Wold Weird, or, yeah, the Wold Wrath, sorry, which, that actually sold out day one. That sold out Thursday of the con, as did the the Retribution of Menoth's Hyperion Colossal. Those both sold out just, like, first day, gone. Same with the uh, Iron Kingdom's role-playing game, which I'd kind of hoped to acquire a copy of. That that was just gone Thursday, first thing. Was that, like, in book form, or did it have statues? That's a book. Huh. Uh, that That is brand new, just came out. But to compensate for it, uh, Privateer announced that because there was such amazing demand at Gen Con, they actually went ahead and released... Uh, they, they pushed up the release date for the role-playing book. It's gone from uh, late September to September 19th. That's only a couple weeks. Because they're like, holy crap, people really want to play this. I guess we should get it out. That said, also, uh, one final comment. The uh, Weird Miniatures had been... start. Uh, they started a Kickstarter for a new game that they wanted to release a couple weeks ago uh, called Evil Baby Orphanage. And because that Kickstarter was so unbelievably successful, they went ahead and just printed the game and had it completely ready to go for Gen Con. And we picked it yeah. up. And all three of us played yep. it together. So we will definitely be talking about that more next week. Oh, you want me to play that some more? Yes, definitely. Hitler is involved. There, There is a baby Hitler. What? How can you really go wrong when you have baby Hitler? 
lots of ways from the sounds <laughs> of it. By forgetting to supervise every him. Every possible way. Let's, there's no way to go right, really, but whatever. It is not really directly pertinent to us, but I feel like they're so crazy we should mention them. Uh, Christy got some Neko Mimi ears, which have a tiny EEG device on them that and the ears wave around because of the EEG device. And those are crazy and cool, which is all that needs to be said about those. Yep. And that's the show. So yeah, tune in next week. We'll talk about more stuff. Stop! Indeed. So apparently next week is Evil Baby Orphanage. And, and possibly Darksiders too, if I've got time this weekend. So many games. Games. And then we're going to be back on WLRA in like a couple weeks. Yep. That That's a coming. We will have to either stop cursing or continue cursing and I will bleep. <laughs> I'll just bleep that whole thing. I'll, I'll just And I, I'll only and not People will think it's very profane. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Paris. Your Sen. is nice. Bleed fat. <laughs> and we'll catch you next week on... <laughs>